literally like one of those people in the circus that gets shot out of a cannon and just nails him. It's funny because he's like kind of like a circus dude. He looks like one. This is a bachelorette recap from a guy, a really manly guy. I'm gonna put some hair on your chest. If last week's episode was brought to you by the word manipulation, then this week's episode was brought to you by the word nothing. Just awkward silence. So where we last left off is Blake was trying to win the hand of another bachelorette. So Katie asked the advice of another girl who's led on a guy midway through the season. Caitlin, how did the guys take it when you bet on someone new? Were the guys really? mad at you? Yeah. Ugh, shoot. A lot. Like, what did you expect her to say, Katie? Oh, they loved it. Most of them thanked me. In fact, my relationships grew stronger with every single guy. They weren't bitter at all. They understand fully that we were on a reality dating show and wrenches are gonna be thrown into the plans. They'll be very thankful that another guy has been added to the house, just as long as he likes talking man stuff, like sports and ways to grill your burger. No, but Katie disregards all of that and ends up bringing him on anyway. But at least she's taking it slow with him by giving him the very first one-on-one -on -one date card available. Now, for those of you who don't know who Blake is, I said last week that Blake looks like every Avenger wrapped into one. And some of you rightfully pointed out that I forgot the Hulk. You're right. So how's this? Blake also looks like if Lou Ferrigno had a beard. Like his jaw is wider than his face is tall. I don't even know how that's possible. So Blake and Katie go on a date with horses, even though Blake is deathly afraid of horses. As a kid, I was always be terrified of horses. It must be the long face. He's more of a wide face guy. No, you shut up. So they pretty much spend the entire day just making out and sucking face. What can he say? He likes big buttes and he cannot lie. No, you shut up. The date ended with a performance by Lane Hardy, who you may remember as the American Idol season 17 winner, as in American Idol, which airs on ABC. America's broadcasting company really flexing their muscle with this one. What was Sheridan from The Bachelor listen to your heart already booked? Then it was time for the group date, where they played some made up sport, which was described as a cross between basketball and rugby, which kind of seems like an oxymoron, since basketball is a non-contact sport and rugby is the most contact sport. Like, those two things just shouldn't go together. Kind of like Zoe Deschanel and Michael Bolton. I'm Zoe Deschanel alongside a real expert in love, the one and only Michael Bolton. That's what it says on my business card. Has anyone at ABC watched a sport before? Let's combine basketball and rugby and have them wear wrestling singlets. Their producers are probably like, hey, does anyone want to play tennis later? Ah, I would, but I didn't bring my bathing suit. So the game was going fine until Hunter's steroids kicked in. The red team, I'm telling you. Wow, really going for it. Oh. Oh. So he lays out the big verge, Mike P, which I think counts as the first time he's ever been laid. Hunter comes out of nowhere, literally like one of those people in the circus that gets shot out of a cannon and just nails him. Dude was like freaking Mighty Mouse out there. And then that's when the whole date just starts getting violent. And, uh, that set the tone. So naturally, the guy with the least attractive body gets knocked out of the game. Michael A, wide open. He's going for it. Oh, from the back! Oh, come on. That was the biggest flop by a guy from Akron that I've seen since... No, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Textbook tackle. Like, yeah, he led with the crown of his helmet, but he's not wearing a helmet, so you can't flag him. It was a solid hit. On a scale of one to Rachel slamming into the earth, I give it nine oofs. Oh, 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 and the hit was made by Justin, so naturally when it happened, we were all like. I mean, it was a big hit. And for more on that hit, let's go to Aaron for more commentary. Michael A is on the floor. He's not moving. You know, this is definitely serious. Okay, thanks, Aaron. 
I also love the camera guy here. Like a dude might be dead on the field. At this point, we didn't know. And the camera guy's like, let me get as close as I can with the world's largest camera lens. Uh, yeah. 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 It's like, way to read the room, camera guy. That camera guy's like, Justin's not the only one who's gonna get a good shot on him. Also, was that the trophy that they were fighting for? Like, yeah, like I know a rose was on the line, but ABC was apparently also like, you know what? Let's also give them a trophy with giant golden testicles on top. I mean, look to each his own, I guess. So later that night, the guys are all vying for time with Katie. And you've got Courtney, who is still using quirky first date pickup lines, even though we're halfway through the season. I want you to know I'm gonna be the toilet paper whenever <laughs> goes down. You know, I really can't see why she sent him home this week. Then it was time for the one-on-one -on -one date with Andrew S. And they just go to a field with a lot of Christmas lights set up and um, and random truth or dare cards hanging. Show me your signature dance moves. Ooh, okay, you go first. Ooh. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> then you got the dolphin dance. Oh. No. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, like uh, definitely uh, a lot uh, of oh, a that. Lot. Look, I know it's got to be tough for on ABC producers, especially when you're secluded to one resort during a global pandemic. Why are you so strong? <laughs> <laughs> the top, top, no. But you got to do better than playing truth or dare for like the 12th time this season. Why not just have them play some made up sport called hammerball, which is a cross between badminton and ultimate frisbee. I don't, I don't know. All we ask is that you just spend a little bit of time coming up with creative dates. Please. And look, I like Andrew S. a lot. Not just because he's from my new hometown of Chicago. And not just because he plays football. And not just because he reminds me of Jaws from the old Burger King Kids Club characters. I like him because he's nice and genuine and real. I mean, he brought up the idea of being in an interracial couple, which I think is something that shouldn't be overlooked, even in a ridiculous reality TV dating show. One of my exes that I had back in the day, she was... She was worried about, you know having mixed children. And I know her heart and I know her character. She's not racist or anything, but she was worried about going to a grocery store and someone asking, are these your kids? And they not look like her. And hearing that, it was tough. Andrew S is a real one and I'm pulling for him the rest of the season. But if you watch these recaps, um, you know that that's kind of like the kiss of death. <laughs> Whenever I start pulling for someone, they're usually gone by the next week. So um, take that all with a grain of salt, I guess. So he ends up getting the rose while they're in a hot tub. So Andrew, mm -hmm. will you accept this rose? I will. And part of me kind of wanted her to still pin it onto his chest. Yes, I will accept this rose. Ow! Did you just try and stab me with the rose? Onto the rose ceremony. In a show that keeps sending home their villains every single week, the drama in this episode didn't really start until the rose ceremony. Hunter, who already got a rose by deflowering Mike P on the bash ball field, steals Katie away for even more alone time, which pisses the other guys off. And none more than sun-kissed Bradley Cooper. And to me, it's like, it's funny how the guy who literally spent the entire first episode inside of a box is now complaining that he's not getting enough time with Katie. Time is our most precious asset here. Yeah, absolutely. Then again, judging by how red he gets in the face, I now get it. You can't get sunburnt inside a box. But I've been burned before, like... So the guys are all pissed that Hunter's been taking more time, even though he's got the rose, and he's already safe for next week. You are in a position of safety. I'm in a position of not safety. And I feel like it would have been great if you would have just given a little bit of thought. I said, hey... Okay. Dude, I might be gone tonight. You have another week, bro. He's stealing time away from the guys who don't have a rose yet. I mean, I gotta be honest, man. Like, you have a rose, you know? Of all nights to have that set up when 12 dudes are on the chopping block. But Hunter actually makes a great point. I'm competing for the same love that you are. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Just because he's got the rose doesn't mean he's not gonna stop trying to vie for her love. Like, yeah, he may be safe until the next week, but he's still trying to develop a relationship with her. And that takes time. And again, not to continuously take the side of all the villains on this show, but... Let's take a step back, people. And speaking of Thomas, I love how Hunter was like, I'm gonna be aggressive. I'm here for Katie and Katie only. But guess what? I'm focused on Katie. I don't give a what they think. I don't care what any of these guys think about me. And hold, hold up. Did, did you just call me Thomas? But I can't take anything back. That's exactly what Thomas used to say when we would talk to him, bro. Dude, don't, it is, okay, though. Hey, I'm not hey, calling you a Thomas, listen, but that's exactly what he would is, say. This, you could have done it, bro. You could have done it. Bro, done it. Come, bro, not cool. I'm not like Thomas. You can say I'm like a fun-sized Jacob from Twilight who can fit in an overhead bin. Sure, but you cannot say I'm like Thomas. That's where I draw the line, bro. I don't care what the guys think of me, unless they think that of me. And with that, everyone of note ended up getting a rose, except for Courtney. I want you to know I'm gonna be the toilet paper whenever <laughs> goes down. Again, I don't understand why. Till next week, ladies.